I want to welcome you as we join together in worship as Carlson Memorial United Methodist Church. Thank you for rolling with the challenges this morning. The thing we tested Friday that should have worked didn't. So, here we are. <laughs> I want to welcome you all as we gather together this morning. It is good to worship together in spirit and in truth, one God, one Lord, one Christ, one Holy Spirit, joined together in one body, one faith, one baptism. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for all uh, that you have done over these last few weeks uh, as we have worked to... Uh, Continue as the body of Christ in the midst of very weird times. Uh, I am excited to be able to share with you, and you uh, may have already seen the email or the announcement, uh, that we will be back to in-person worship starting next Sunday, June 21st. Uh, we are going to have two services. We are going to have a traditional service at 10 a.m., a contemporary service at 7 p.m., and both of those will also be streamed live on Facebook and maybe somewhere else, depending on whether or not we can get it to work. Um, <laughs> so we, are, uh, we, we have spaced out that time so that we have an opportunity to clean the facilities in between. Uh, we will be practicing social distancing uh, and uh, various other things. We are not requiring masks, but we are encouraging them, and we will have masks available, uh, as well as hand sanitizer for any who are interested. Uh, as I said on Friday, all of this is an experiment. None of us uh, have tried to do this thing before. So we are taking it a little bit at a time, a bite at a time. And so if you see things that aren't there yet, if we're having issues with, oh, I don't know the live stream, or if uh, there's a concern about this thing is missing or that thing is missing. For example, we won't have a separate children's church next week. Uh, we won't have nursery available yet. We're working our way there. So uh, this is gonna be a little bit at a time. I know for some people that means they will be watching from home next week. I understand. We are working towards it. We are going to experiment. And look, we're all figuring this out as we go. So if you've got something that's burden on your heart, if, you, if you're like, well, this, this seems like it's missing or that seems like it's missing, let us know. Uh, and maybe we can get your help in making that happen as well. So please join us. Please experiment with us. Uh, please laugh with us as we try to figure out things that we have absolutely no idea how to do uh, or we thought we knew how to do and it's not as easy as we thought it was. Walk with us as we journey together as the body of Christ through this time. A few other things to let you know about this morning. Uh, this Saturday, June 20th from 9.30 to 11.30, there's going to be a drive through baby shower for Allison and Bobby Poffs. Uh, baby boy that is uh, due uh, in a little while. Uh, you can go to our website, carlsonumc.org, and under the news and notes tab, there are details there, uh, as well as a way to RSVP, or you can call the church office to RSVP as well. We are receiving clothing donations uh, for the children of Laganov Island in Haiti. Uh, this pandemic has hit them too. And uh, what was already a fairly fragile economy is uh, now struggling even more. Uh, so please consider donations of children's clothing uh, for the kids down there. The deadline is June 29th. And if you look under the missions tab on our webpage, uh, or if you call the church office, uh, you can get information about what items and sizes are needed. Finally, we have the Y40 Move Against Hunger 5K. Uh, this is a virtual 5K run uh, over the course of five days, July 11th through the 15th, uh, to support orphans and children in Haiti. Uh, you are encouraged to form a team and walk, run, swim, bike, or kayak to raise funds uh, to help this poverty-stricken community. Again, more information can be found on our website under the missions tab. You can call the church office. And Margaret, is it on the Facebook page as well? It is on the Facebook page as well. Uh, so please take a look in those places or give us a holler. 
if you would like to participate in that. If you've never done a virtual 5K, uh, it is, well, it's a lot like a regular 5K, except you're the only one doing it. Uh, <laughs> but everybody is turning in their times remotely. Uh, so you could do it on a treadmill. You could do it out on the street. You could do it uh, in the river, not necessarily Clusahatchee, but uh, whichever one you prefer. And uh, you all turn in everything individually. But other than that, it would work the same as a normal marathon. So please consider participating in that as well. With that, will you join me? as we begin our morning in prayer. Almighty God, you know our hearts, you know our minds, you know our souls, you know the challenges we're facing right now, you know the struggles we're having. Lord, you know that uh, as we're seeking to adapt habits and change ways of doing things again, uh, Lord, you know where we're struggling. And Father God, you know what places in our hearts that were already struggling or wounded or broken are even more in need of your touch this morning. So Holy Spirit, come down among us as we are in many different places, uh, across many different homes, and with loved ones or by ourselves. Lord, meet with us here. Draw us together in your Holy Spirit as one body together, that we might glorify your name this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be sure to give us a welcome on the uh, live chat and say hi and howdy. And uh, particularly if you're joining us for the first time, uh, we'd love to get to know you, see you, and uh, see if God is calling us to serve together for his kingdom. All right. Let's worship the Lord together. Amazing grace, so sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to
Okay, we ask that you sing along at home and get into the worship spirit here as we sing I'll Fly Away. glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away when the shadows of this life have grown I'll fly away like a bird from prison bars have flown I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory fly away when I die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. One more time. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. lasting. Amen. At this time, I encourage you to seek the Lord, to see what he would have you to put into his hands this day for his work. The Lord knows you. The Lord knows everything about your life, your story, what you have in hand, and what he has provided for you. So take this time this morning to prayerfully listen to the Lord. What would he have you to give towards the work of his kingdom? Whether it be financial resources, time, talents, abilities, uh, connections, social circles that you can share the gospel in. What has God put in your hands to use for his purposes? Let's pray now. Almighty God, out of the many blessings you've given to us, so now we give ourselves back to you. Take these gifts and let them be more in your hands than they could ever be in ours. Use them to spread your word, your love, and your kingdom throughout LaBelle and to the ends of the earth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
ask that you continue to worship with us. This next song, it's impossible not to stomp your feet or clap your hands, so dig through the couch. If you have a tambourine in there, now is the time to pull it out. And we ask that you uh, just get involved with the active and living process of worshiping the one true creator God, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart, till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire. God, I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart, till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire, until I am a soul on fire. Lord, restore the joy I have, I have wandered, bring me back. In this darkness, lead me through until all I see is you, yeah. God, I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart until I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire, Lord, let me burn for you again. Let me return to you again. Lord, let me burn for you again. Let me return to you again. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Until I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Try to slow things down a bit. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the home of He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Take me as 
doesn't find me All my fears and failures Fill my life again I give my life to follow Everything I believe in Now I Let us go to the Lord now in prayer. If you will join me as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. And as we do, we're going to stop along the way, a section at a time. And not only lift up uh, the prayer that he taught, but the prayers of our hearts as well. That we would lift our praises to him, our concerns to him, our lives to him. So let us go to the Lord now in prayer. Will you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord God, we give you praise this day. We give you honor and glory. We lift up your name on high. We worship you this morning. Lord, you are good and your love endures forever. We have seen you move in our daily lives. We've seen you move in our families. We've seen you move in our nation. We've seen you move in your church. We've seen you move throughout the history of your people. And we give you praise this day. We come to you praying this morning knowing that we have already seen your handwork. And so, Lord, we give you thanks now for the ways in which we've seen you move in this week. Thy kingdom come. Lord, we ask that you would use us as your hands and feet this day. That you would move in us, Father God. That you would shape and mold us into the people you have called us to be so that we might share your kingdom with others. So that we might represent your kingdom here on earth. 
Lord, move in us in such a way that others can see in our lives your grace, your love, your glory, your goodness, your holiness, and your forgiveness. And that we can honor and glorify your name wherever we go. Do this in us as individuals, Father God. And do this in us as a church body as well. That when people look at us, they might see you. Working the same way through the churches around this community, Father God, regardless of denomination or, or anything else, Lord, shape them after your kingdom. That they might bring glory and honor and praise to you. Lord, work in those ministries beyond the local church as well. Gulf Coast Wesley Foundation, St. Matthew's House and Jill's Place, the Act Shelter, Riverside Camp and Retreat Center, Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and the ongoing disaster relief work around our community. Work in all these, Father God, that in places where maybe we as a church can't get, Lord, your hand may still reach and your kingdom may still touch. Work through those beyond our local churches, well, those who have gone out from us in mission. The Krolls, the Williams, the Yargers, the Zirkles, our sister church in Sagua, Cuba, the mission schools and clinic in Laganov, Haiti. Work in all of these, Father God. Care for them and provide for them during these challenging times. And use them to spread your kingdom to the ends of the earth. God, we lift up to you now any among us who are stretching out as your hands and feet. And Lord, we ask for your hand to shape them now. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, teach us your will. Speak your word to us. Shape us to be a people who not only know your will, but do it. Who live in accord with your holy plan for our lives. Teach us now, Lord, what that means. Show us your will for this week. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, we bring to you the needs of our lives and our hearts this day. Lord, I lift up to you uh, uh, the family of uh, Deborah Russell. I particularly lift up to you her son, Doug, uh, who is uh, a part of our family here, an uh, extended family here, Father God. Lift up to you, Doug and Wanda, uh, with his mother's passing, Lord Jesus. I just ask for your hand to be on them that you will strengthen them through this time. Lord, we thank you that she is in your hands. And Lord, we ask that you will comfort her family in this time. As well, Lord, we lift up to you the family of Julian Keene, Father God, with uh, his uh, tragic passing, Lord Jesus. You know the circumstances. You know the needs of these hearts. And Lord, I just lift them up to you in the midst of this, Father God. Lord, provide care, heal, and comfort in the midst of grief. Lord, I lift up to Eugene Wallace uh, with ongoing problems with her knee, Father God, and we just ask for your healing for her in this time. And Lord, I lift up to you all those others. And Lord, we bring to you each now our own needs. Hear us and provide in Jesus' name. And forgive us our trespasses. Lord, we bring you before you now where we have sinned, where we have fallen short of your glory, where we have not done your will, where we have broken your law, where we have rebelled against your love, where we have not loved our neighbors. 
and where we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, God. as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, we lay before you now all those who have sinned against us. We forgive them. And Lord, we seek for your grace to be at work in their lives as well. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, help us to walk in your ways in this week to come. Help us to see the traps of the world, the flesh, and the devil for what they are. And to steer clear. God, show us your will. That we may walk in it day in and day out. And we will give you all the praise and all the glory. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 12, starting in verse 1. I encourage you to read along in your own Bibles. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Uh, if uh, yours is a little different, don't worry. It's the same Bible. Uh, but uh, hear God's word as we open it this morning. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers... By the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, in proportion to our faith. If service, in our serving. The one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, as we open your word this morning... We need you to speak to us. We need your guidance. We need your direction. And more importantly of all, we need your Holy Spirit to transform us from the inside out. So come, Holy Spirit, and speak to us this morning at the point of our need that you know better than anyone else. Tune our minds, our ears, and our hearts to know your voice and to tell it apart from all others around us. Speak to us, God. Use whatever words I may offer, but you speak to us that we may know and do your will and yours alone. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. There's a recurring theme that shows up in all kinds of stories, in movies, in books, in TV shows, in various other media. And it's... It's one of my quirks that when I see these themes showing up again and again and again, I want to know why. What is it that draws us to them? Why is this so common in so many different stories? And this particular underlying theme is the idea that there is a bigger world out there than what we know, what we see, what we recognize. 
Usually in the course of these stories, uh, we have one of two vantage points, one of two entry points into that story. A lot of times it comes in the form of the new kid. That there is this individual who has been living their workaday life. They've been going along the path of things. They've been seeing about six inches in front of their face and that's it. And they were completely ignorant of any bigger reality other than day-to-day life. And all of a sudden, something happens. A tragedy. Destiny. A loved one, a potential love interest, a a mentor comes out of the blue and opens their eyes to see the bigger picture. Maybe it's a a larger battle of good versus evil. Maybe it's a a hidden society. Uh, Maybe it's an underlying evil. Maybe it's someone who's been uh, pulling puppet strings behind the scenes. It shows up in in sci-fi, in fantasy, in spy fiction, in uh, all sorts of different genres. This theme shows up. And this new kid comes in and is initiated, is our eyes to learn all of this new reality that is around them. Sometimes we come in instead through the eyes of the old master. The one who used to be a part of this world but got out of the game years ago. The retired spy. The Old West lawman who just wanted to settle down on his ranch and be left alone. The old wise man who had put himself into exile but is now called back into the battle. All of these point the viewer, the reader, the listener to a greater reality than anyone realized was there. And I truly believe that we are drawn to those stories over and over again because deep down inside of us, God has put it in us to recognize that there is more going on than just six inches in front of our face. There is more going on in this world than just getting by day by day. There is a bigger story God is telling. And he has a place for us in that story. In our passage this morning, we have an invitation into this deeper reality. Going beyond just getting by, putting food on the table, punching the clock, cleaning the house, caring for the kids. There is something bigger that we are a part of. And it begins with giving ourselves over to the Lord. Paul says in, in Romans, and he's building on all of the chapters that come before this. He is, th- this is his turning point in the story. He's been 11, spent 11 chapters laying out this grand story of salvation, how God had worked through Israel, how God had worked through Christ Jesus, the point of the cross. He's laid all of these things out, and then he begins chapter 12 by saying, your response to this is here. By the mercies of God, as you have seen this bigger story of salvation that is there, join me by presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Here's the thing. This word worship, we, we use, most of the time we use it to talk about music, right? Or we talk about the worship service. We talk about get, co- going to worship on Sunday morning. We're talking about going to a church service. We talk about worship music in terms of a style or at least a focus of our worship. We talk about praise and worship music sometimes as separate from uh, traditional hymns. But we're limiting that word. Because that word is about recognizing the worth of God and giving ourselves over to him. And worship music is a part of that. It's a great part of that. Don't hear me playing that down. The way I read Revelation, we're going to be spending eternity singing to the Lord of how great and awesome he is. 
Everything we do here is choir practice. So sing out when it's time to sing. Doesn't matter if you can't hit the notes. Here's the thing. In heaven, we're going to have perfected bodies, which means your vocal cords are going to be perfect. So just get in the habit of singing right now. God will work out the pitch when we get to heaven, okay? But that is part of a bigger picture of worshiping God. And in recognition of who he is, the only appropriate response, Paul said, is to give ourselves fully to him in every aspect of our lives. To present our bodies as a living sacrifice. When you sacrifice something, you give it over. It is no longer yours. You turn it over to the Lord. Likewise, our lives belong to God. And I'm going to tell you, that's not a one-time decision. It's a day-by-day choice. Next, he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Look, this world pulls at us a lot. We have a lot of influences coming at us through social media, through the news, through our friends, through our social circles, through uh, the, the stories that we consume through books and, and TV and movies. And all of those are pushing values at us. And some of those are good and some of those aren't. And so we need to let our mind, our soul, be shaped not by the values of this world because the world is going to lift up things that we don't need to be pursuing. The world is going to tell you that you are the most important thing in this world, that you come first, your way, your needs, your wants, your rights, as one of many examples. God says, lay yourself down to me. So don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As you lay yourself down to God, as you worship him, as you seek him in his word, seek him in prayer, he's going to shape you if you let him. He's going to mold you if you will open yourself up to him. That way, as it says in verse 2, as he renews you, you're going to be able to test and see what is the will of God. You can know the will of God. As he shapes you, as he molds you, it'll be more and more obvious if this is God's will or if this is the will of humanity. And his will is good, acceptable, and perfect. Next he says this, For by the grace given to me I say to every one of you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment. Step back for a second and look at yourself through the eyes of God. We have a tendency today to either think of ourselves more highly than we ought. And this probably isn't really local to today. We've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years. We either think that we are the greatest of all time. Or we think we're the worst of all time. We have a tendency towards both. Oh, I'm so awesome. Oh, I'm so good at this. My dad, uh, for, for years, has walked around the house singing, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. No judgment, Dad. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's easy to lift ourselves up and to think of ourselves as the center of the universe. When really, that's God's role in our life. We go to the other extreme of, of thinking ourselves as, as dirt, as, as nothing, as worthless. But that's not who God made you to be. God doesn't make junk. We saw a few weeks ago as we were, as we were looking that God knit you together in your mother's womb. That God made you a little lower than himself and above all creation. 
So I say to you this morning, recognize where you fit in all of that. God has lifted you up in his son. But also recognize where God is. And that we must bow ourselves before his will, his plan, his purposes. And you're not alone in this story either. Paul goes on to say that uh, as one body has many members, so we, though many, are one body in Christ. Your story with God is not a solo adventure. You have been brought together with others around this community, around this world for a particular time and place. You are here at Carlson, not by accident. Okay? Nobody showed up here and God looked down and said, oh, well, I didn't realize Mary was going to be here this morning. No, you are here by divine design. God has a purpose for you in this family, in this body, in this church. And he's equipped you especially for that purpose. You say, well, I, 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 don't, I don't have anything to offer. I, I, you know, I, I don't have any real skills. I don't have any talents. I don't have any abilities. I don't want to be up in front of people. I don't want to work in a nursery. I'm not, I'm not good with kids. I'm not good with adults. I'm not really even good with myself. I just, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really have anything to offer. You, in your own skills... May or, that may or may not be true. But God has equipped you. He has given you gifts and talents and resources. Because remember, this is the same God who made you. And as you are in Christ, as you are submitting yourself to him, as you are allowing his Holy Spirit to work in your life, he equips and enables you for the work that he has called you to do. So he has brought you here for a purpose, and he has given you a tool that nobody else has. There are talents and resources at your disposal that others don't have. And God has brought you here to work together with those others so that everything meshes. My hand and my foot do two completely different jobs, okay? I can't walk on my hands. I know there are people with that ability. My body type does not work like that, okay? I use my hands to write. I use my hands to type. I use my hands to wash dishes. I use my hands to talk. I use my hands to do all sorts of things, but they do a different job than my feet. My feet get me around. My, pe my feet hold me up. My elbows do a different job than my hands. My mouth does a different job than my elbows. My ears do a different job than my mouth. Each of those is there for a reason. And just like that, Paul tells us here, so are you. You're here in this story for a reason. You are a main character. You're not a bystander. You're not an audience member. When we gather together in whatever form or fashion, whether it be online, whether it be here in the sanctuary, whether it be for Bible studies, whether it be for fellowship times, whether it be for projects, you're here for a purpose. Because God has put something into your hands that I can't do. He's put something into Jimmy's hands that Kathy can't do. He's put something into Julie's hands that Greg can't do. He's put something into Greg's hands that Laura can't do. He's put something into each of our hands so that all the pieces might work together. Right now, the parts of my body are doing a thing all at once. My feet are moving around because even during my own sermon, I can't stand still. My hands are emphasizing things. My voice is speaking things. My eyes are watching the camera to make sure I'm in the right place. My ears are hearing the sound of my voice. My brain is processing what's the next thing that needs to happen. All the parts are working together. That's who we're called to be as the body of Christ. 
So what's your part in God's story? In the story he's telling here in LaBelle right now, or in various other parts of the world? What are the abilities and talents and gifts he's given you? I want you to set aside some time this week. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Block it out. Don't say, oh, I'll get to that. I don't know about you, but that's, for me, that's code for no, I won't. Set aside time and say, God, who are you calling me to be in your story? Lay yourself into your hands. Give yourself over to him as an act of worship. Ask him to transform and renew your mind. To give you a view of who he has created you to be. And to enable the gifts he has given you. And then as he says, go do. There's a big story that God is telling. Are you going to stand on the sidelines? Or are you going to join? Because that's who he's called you to be. Let's pray. Almighty God, open our eyes. You have been spooling out this story over thousands of years. In Israel, in the patriarchs. In Jesus, in the disciples, in the early church, in centuries of preparation, in the founders of this congregation and so many others throughout uh, decades and centuries where you have brought your people together in this specific place. And yes, Lord, you've called us to be here for this time and place as well. Show us who you would have us to be in this story. We lay ourselves down before you and submit ourselves to your plan. Use us, shape us, mold us, equip us, teach us your will, renew our minds so that we may know when it's you leading us, not just our own ideas, not just the whims of this culture, not the uh, snares of the evil one, but we may know clearly your will and do it. And help us to walk in your ways wherever we go. Bring us together as a body, whether separated by uh, viral outbreaks or whether together in one place, Lord, wherever we find ourselves in any given moment, bring us together through the power of your Holy Spirit that overcomes any form of physical distance we have to maintain. Bring us together as one body in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to worshiping the Lord through our songs as we prepare to go out and worship him with our lives. And the God that we worship is a wonderful counselor. It's a friend. It's a sacrificial son. It's also a good, good father. So join us as we sing our last closing song today.
are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to As you go about this week, may the love of God abound in you. May you find yourself caught up in his story. May you see yourself through his eyes. May he renew you and shape you and mold you and equip you for all that he has called you to do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in his peace. Amen.